it doesn't have a lot of Republican support when it comes to Medicaid expansion, and that debate has been raging again in Lansing this week. And so now we have um, some different bills coming out of the Senate committee. Um, what, how have they differed from what the House passed? And is there going to be some kind of decision here? I think they're going to start talking about it at the end of August, but can we see something in early fall when it comes to Medicaid expansion? Oh, I predict you will. I mean, you've got three bills now. It's highly unusual to have to move three bills out of committee that are competing. But I think the, the strategy there is they'll be able to pick and choose from each bill, put it together, and come up with a compromise if, you know, it's still relevant. The way Obamacare is falling apart, I'm not sure it's possible for the state to put together a, a relevant bill. Whoa, okay, you just said Obamacare is falling apart. <laughs> All right, so you just uh, totally just change, change the topic yeah, of conversation. You already got, you already got 14 million new people with insurance. In, it's relevant in the legislature because they're looking for some guidance on what this thing's going to look like, and they keep postponing the implementation, yeah. the rulemaking. It's tough for the states to put together a plan that they are sure will comply. It's tough for the states, but other states have done this. Yes. See, it's with the actual leadership on this issue have figured it out. Uh, and, we can't blame the governor on this. The governor is the one that's no, saying absolutely. we want to vote on this. Governor we, this is the, in the done. right place. It's the legislature that, that, that's that been the, the stumbling block here. And, and all of these imagined issues, uh, some of which deserve an answer, uh, and I think Maybe the governor could have been more forthright about giving those answers, giving them publicly to, to put pressure on, on the legislature. But, but this is all about the people who just don't support the law. This is the same thing we saw with implementation of Social Security oh, 60 years ago. The absolutely same the same you thing. You have now the curious situation changed of like, both business and labor standing well, up no and question. saying, this thing is going to kill jobs. This thing's not going to work. With that kind of uh, united voices rising against this, and remember, you will have um, to, the overwhelming majority of the population doesn't support it either. You're going to see real changes to this. Social Security you was changed. Social, was, Social Security was changed more than a half dozen times uh, by the Congress in the first, I don't know what it was, 18, 20 some months of, of its implementation. The point is, when you are doing something this large on this large a scale and this kind of social shift, which this this legislation marks, done so it has not, it doesn't and, happen overnight. And, and you're going to have to go point, back. And the legislature is crafting law when they don't know what the ground's going to look like. Well, when it's implemented. you know, other states haven't had this problem, so it's not it's well, not as if Michigan is is that anomalous. Doesn't state, that doesn't mean it's going to work, and I don't think you can fault the legislature for being cautious. The issue this is thing. the issue it's is that it's the potential to bust our budget if it's not done. The issue right. is that in, Republican in lawmakers Re Republican lawmakers don't want it to work. And that's been the the, the, the opposition the whole time. They want to see it fail it's so they true. can say it didn't work. It's Let's not true. do but something you'd also have, you'd also And they have, have no other alternative. You'd have 400,000 extra people who are in, covered under insurance mm -hmm. and they would be mostly in the southeast Michigan 400, area. 400,000 people. 400,000 people. I mean this is the thing that gets lost. These guys are up there with their insurance that we pay for talking about why they shouldn't we shouldn't insure other people who don't have insurance I mean the, the gall of this is one of the things that that is really really testing but your, problem is, your problem is the structure correct my, well, my problem is the uncertainty are we going to get stuck with this bill and in five years are we going to have to make choices do we fund our schools do we fund our universities or do we raise or taxes do we to pay for this? all of it uh, there's no room in Michigan to raise taxes why not Steve, and not stay competitive we've been down that road <laughs> and we saw what Actually, happened to our economy when did we raise taxes we raised taxes during the Granholm years. We absolutely in the, at, did. at the end. No, you know, we didn't. There's we raised a, it in there's the middle, a, 2000. She also implemented all of the all of the Engler tax cuts, which other states didn't do then, early in the then, in the decade. And then pushed taxes and fees up across the board. But you, if this we, is our such taxes a great, are down 25 I mean, percent. One of the things one of from the, things, the end of the Engler, not uh, when you count in all of the additional they taxes. Sure, and they fees. are. When you when you look at you want to look at this thing today you, in Washington, you've got a debate going on whether Congress and their aides and their staffers are going to participate in Obamacare, and they they're pitching a fit about having to participate. If it's that great a, a program, why do the people who because they have they have wrote it kind of like uh, uh, well, healthcare well, though. So that, do a that lot of folks. We, if they can, if they're, they're going to get written employees. out. Why should I don't think others? they should. I don't think I they mean, should you be had, right now. You had all, the major unions standing up and saying this thing is going to hurt job, job creation in America. It needs to be fixed. That's well, because I mean, everybody is is uh, now beholden to this idea that tax policy is what drives job creation, which is a complete falsity.
complete falsity. And this well, is going to continue. that's absolutely ridiculous. Steve. It's not ridiculous. All right, tell them why it's ridiculous in the well, 30 seconds that we have left. Because any time you've dropped capital gains taxes, any time you've dropped the corporate income tax, you've had economic growth in this country. Jim Blanchard, Those Jim Blanchard, are Jim Blanchard, you can look up. Jim Blanchard raised taxes in his first term and grew more jobs in his first term than Rick Snyder is on pace to grow now. So, so what, what does that say? Well, Steve, any time we've cut the, no, no, the no, taxes no. on business, that's, that's a specific example. We've stopped, and you can cite, the, um, you know, maybe it's cut that, taxes, grew the economy. Right. Maybe it's that tax policy has little to do with job growth. It absolutely has everything to do with job growth. All right, we're going to solve this. If the government this, takes the money, not the, money to not create the main jobs. lever. It's not the main lever and on job And all I said was Medicaid expansion, right? <laughs> now we're talking and about tax policy. all I said was Medicaid expansion. Yeah. All right, just uh, wrapping up the show, just a little bit of uh, political news. Um, Congressman Dave Camp thinking about running for mm -hmm. Carl Levin's seat. What does that do to Terry Lynn Land? Well, it puts her out of the race. If he gets in, he puts her out of the race. I want to know why? what those conversations well, look like. I want to know what those conversations look like in the GOP. Like, who makes that phone call? Minute, and she I'm says, wait sure, a minute. I'm not sure I, I agree I with that. Terry Lynn Land has won statewide mm -hmm. office. Uh, Dave Camp, great, uh, great uh, member of Congress. I mean, I, I'm not knocking him, but is not that well known outside of his district. Dave Camp has $3 million in his um, campaign coffers to start. She will not be able to raise a dime. And I like Terry and, and thought she would be a good candidate against Peters. But if Camp gets in, she's not going to be able to raise the money to stay in this race. And that's got to be disappointing for her because she came out early. I don't but think she that's... came out early, and you know she was willing to put herself in. But if if Camp gets in, I mean she's already having trouble raising, raising money. Raising money, and if Camp gets in, the money goes away. I still think there's an interesting conversation of him leaving a powerful position in Congress right now. In the well, remember amazing. his his chairmanship's term limited, so mm -hmm. he won't be in that powerful position for the next. Um, session of Congress. So it's a little less he's giving up than perhaps if he'd ran uh, another time. All right. Well, that is going to have to do it. Thanks, guys. I so appreciate it. We'll see you next <laughs> week, and that'll do it for my week. We're on Facebook.